okay so let's give this a go we'll see see what happens if I try to explain now uh, nerve root pain radicular pain as if I were talking to a layman or as if I were talking to a, a patient uh, even though I'm just talking to a computer screen okay so um, as you say you've got pain in your calf and kind of down the back of your leg I think the problem is coming from your spine um, even though the pain is in your calf and I'll explain to you a little bit about what I think is going on so so you can understand it too first of all let's kind of lay the foundations uh, so that we can kind of both get on the same page and I think you might know some of this so I apologize if I'm telling you things you already know um, but let's go over a few of the basics of just how you feel stuff normally even if you don't have pain so let's say I were to touch you on the calf in fact I'll do that now I'll touch you on the calf when I do that a little signal goes up from your calf up the back of your leg uh, into your pelvis into your low back here where it joins the spinal cord and it goes up to your brain <clears throat> and as you know when that little signal ar arrives in your brain your brain can kind of work out that someone's touching you on, on the calf and that gives you the sensation of being touched on the calf, which you can feel now as I'm doing that. And of course, it all happens pretty much instantaneously, right? But that's what's going on. A little signal coming up from the calf into the spinal cord and up to your brain. Now, I want to focus on uh, the spine, as I said, which is where the problem is. So let's zoom in there. And again, I suppose I'd be using a model, typically, if I was in clinic rather than using this kind of weird program that I've got here. <clears throat> so I think the problem, as I said, is in your spine. And I think it's a particular bit of your spine which I'm going to show you called the nerve root. So let's get rid of some of this skeleton so that you can see. And a little bit of the nerves to make it more clear. Let's just recap. The signal comes up from your calf and it passes through this kind of slip road here and then heads up to the spinal cord and up to the brain and it's this kind of slip road, this nerve root type thing which I think is where the problem is for you now let's put the skeleton back on so we can see where that nerve root is it's kind of surrounded by these bones uh, and by the discs in your spine so if you get a problem with the bones, or in your case think it's probably the disc, then it's going to bother that nerve root. Okay. Now, by bother I mean probably it's going to press on it a little bit. So I think probably it's most likely to be a disc. We can't know for sure, like I don't have MRI vision. And don't worry, we don't need to know right now. But if we do, we can just send you for an MRI if we're concerned. But the most likely thing, given your age and given that you've kind of felt something go on your back, is that you've had a bit of a disc herniation. We can talk about that later. But that disc herniation is pressing on that nerve root somewhat. Um, pressing on it and crowding it out. Now nerve roots are made of tough stuff, um, they are uh, pretty difficult to really damage, you know, nerves get squashed and strained all the time, uh, but they don't like being pressed on too much, and when they're pressed on, they react by becoming kind of irritated, swollen, sore, inflamed, and just generally pissed off. Um, so they said they're quite strong, but if they if you kind of bother them too much, if they get pressed on, then they do become irritated and sore. Have you ever twisted your ankle or spoken to someone who's twisted their ankle, and you kind of see that, you know, the ankle kind of becomes red, painful. Sometimes it becomes swollen, like it balloons up. It's not really too different. Probably what's going on in your nerve root, um, and usually ankle sprains. If you've seen them, they're really painful, they make you walk funny, um, but after a little while, they kind of die down, you just got to give it a bit of time, keep it moving. It's not too different with, with nerve injuries, although we'll talk about that later and about the, the specific things that are best for you to do. 
So we'd imagine that the, the nerve root is being pressed on and crowded out likely by a disc and that it's reacted to that by becoming sore, red, hot and, and pissed off and inflamed. Um, I guess kind of the weird thing is, well, why don't you have much pain in your back, right? Why is the pain in your leg? And in order to understand that, I guess we have to go back to what I was saying about how, you know, usually you're getting signals coming up from your calf and they're passing through the nerve root. That's all they should do, really. It's just like a road. They just got to pass through the nerve root and head up to your brain. And your brain kind of interprets that as a problem in your calf uh, there's a signal coming from your calf but what's happening now when the nerve root is pissed off something that should never happen unless it's injured is that the nerve root itself starts to react by angrily sending off crazy impulses crazy signals up to the brain because it's kind of injured and pissed off and when those signals get up to the brain the brain can't really tell where they're coming from. The brain thinks that those signals are coming from down in the calf. So all those crazy signals go up to the brain. The brain doesn't know they're from the nerve root. It thinks they're from your calf, which is why you've got that horrible, hot, burning pain in your calf. I want to emphasize that this is like pretty common. In fact, it's really common. It's something I see a few times a week, probably almost every day. So even though it sounds kind of weird, um, it's pretty common. Uh, and it's actually what happens whenever you get a nerve injury, right? So we're used to having muscle injuries hurt where the muscle hurts, you know, joint sprains hurt where the joint hurts. Nerve injuries are weird. You get pain in the wrong place, basically. You get pain wherever the nerve is going. Um, but you rarely actually get pain where the nerve hurts. Um, so don't worry too much, although what I'm saying is pretty unusual. Um, it's actually a pretty common uh, thing, and I don't think that um, this is something we need to worry about too much now. I think you'll still get better. Uh, we just got to focus on doing the right things and giving it a bit of time. Um, did you also notice when I assessed you that your um, your movement was a bit weak? So when I asked you to kind of move your foot up against my hand, it was a little bit weak. Um, and uh, I think you hadn't noticed that before we spoke. Again, I want to emphasize that's nothing too much to worry about. Um, basically, um, when we can kind of explain that, uh, we've already explained how sensation is when signals go up through the nerves, up to your brain. Well, movement is just the opposite. Those signals have to go down from your brain through the nerves into the muscle. And again, I would probably be really putting my hands on the patient if they're comfortable with that, demonstrating it, getting them to do it again, giving them plenty of time so that they can really kind of um, embody almost or imagine in their body um, how that's happening in their nervous system. So that signal is supposed to go down from your brain through the nerve into your muscle to tell the muscle to move basically. But because we've got this injury at one point in that pathway, that signal's not getting down properly. So your muscle's not moving properly. It's basically not getting past there. Again, I'm not too worried about that for now. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. Um, but actually um, I find and, and the, the science tells us that people who have this problem, they actually are more likely to get better. It's a bit weird. So although um, it might seem concerning, I'm not concerned for now, although we'll keep an eye on it for sure. Lastly, you also mentioned that you were getting some weird sort of um, prickling and pins and needles um, in your leg too. Uh, that's a similar thing to the pain that we were describing. Um, so normally, again, if I were to touch you on the calf, then when I touch you on the calf, there's some really specialized clever nerves that send off a really specialized clever signal up to a specialized pathway, and it goes up into the specialized part of your brain, and that's happening every day, right? So you, there's, your calf is hot, your calf is cold, someone touches you on the calf, you're getting all these really specific special messages going up to your brain, and your brain can feel the slightest thing perfectly, and it's all really clever. What happens when you've got this nerve injury at your nerve root 
is you're not getting any kind of special clever messages you're just getting crazy kind of barrage of messages going up to the brain um, it's a bit like kind of white noise uh, on a detune radio or something so that kind of barrage of messages goes up to the brain and the brain doesn't really know how to interpret it it's kind of weird so for you it's feeling like prickling some people get like pins and needles sometimes people feel like particularly hot or cold um, so again it, it, it's normal when the nerves are injured when they're firing off these crazy messages to the brain for you to not only get this extreme pain but for you to also get these weird and wonderful sensations that go with it um, it's a bit like this kind of this kind of messaging signal system in your body which usually works so perfectly and wonderfully has suddenly kind of gone a little bit crazy in one place and is giving you all these crazy signals that you have to, your brain has to interpret so um, obviously at that point you know I would never give a lecture like that and I'd want to be kind of trying to turn it into a more of a conversation um, and but I guess those are some of the key points that I would cover and that's the language that I would use to do it which I hope is kind of simple enough for really anyone to understand um, and uh, again as I can't emphasize enough like using the patient's body using the model so that they can understand it um, if indeed they want to of course some people just don't care um, but in my experience a lot of people with sciatica really appreciate understanding what's going on um, so we'll stop recording there and I hope that's been useful to you.